Deacon 170 Presence. No offense, healing or hurtful. Good morning, people. I am your host, Deacon 170. And today's topic of subject under our no offense study, we're going to be talking about healing or hurtful. Healing or hurtful. Let's get right into it, people. It's tempting to ignore our anger altogether, believing that good Christians aren't supposed to get angry. But there are several issues with that strategy. First of all, God gave us the emotion of anger, and anger itself isn't a problem. You remember, we talked about that in the last topic of subject, that anger itself is not sin. It's what you do with it. Anger itself isn't a problem. Secondly, ignoring anger doesn't make it go away. In fact, hiding our anger can often lead to bitterness, resentful, or cynicism, or cynicism, none of which helps us become more like Christ. On the other hand of the spectrum, many of us may give in to our anger, exploding or yelling at others because of our personal pain. Neither response is wise. The thing is, anger can actually be a very useful emotion when managed correctly. Anger indicates when we need to right wrongs, stand up for ourselves and others, and correct a problem. In fact, anger can also be the catalyst to healing and restoration in relationships. Look at Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. NIV says about it, In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give foot give the devil a foothold. Let's read that again. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. This is coming from the NIV version. In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. This encourages us that the day of our hurt should also be the day of our healing. The day of our hurt should also be the day of our healing. That means we'll need to use our anger to fuel action, not feed a grudge. Let me read that again. That means we'll need to use our anger to fuel action, not feed a grudge. How many of us in anger, when we're angry, we're still angry, we hold grudges. We still hold in a grudge. Do we not know that God can hold a grudge against us? Because how many times have we made God angry? How many times have we made him angry? We make him angry every day. And if he wants to, he can hold a grudge against us because he's righteous. He can, he can do so. He has every right to hold a, to hold a grudge against us. But he doesn't. So how can we defuse our anger in a life-giving way? Number one, acknowledge the anger you're feeling. Take a deep breath before saying anything you regret. Take a moment to pause and consider why you're angry. Have someone cross a boundary. Has someone crossed a boundary you like to protect? Has someone hurt a person you love and care about? Is there an injustice that needs to be corrected? If so, don't ruminate about it. Go do something about it. Have a conversation and fight for healing despite your hurt feelings. See, it's always the opposite with us. It's always the opposite with us. But the question is, does God ever do that with us? Does he ever do that with us? Number two, pray about your anger. Ask the Holy Spirit for self-control, a sound mind, and a calm, forgiving attitude. See, society teaches us that when somebody does something to hurt us 
in any form or fashion, anyway, that we supposed to hold on again, hold on, hold on to it, hold it against them, because we live in an unforgiving society. Society teaches us to be so unforgiving. Christ teaches us the opposite. See, that's the problem with us being in the world, living according to the world. Someone wrongs us, oh, we gotta pay him back, we gotta we gotta even the score, we gotta we gotta get him back. And we gotta get him back. Oh, we can't let him get away with that. They made us angry, we gotta get him back. But did Christ ever pay us back for the sins, for the for the things we did to hurt him? Did he ever come after us? Did he ever use his anger to come after us and repay us? Or retaliate or hold a grudge God is forgiving he is so merciful and forgiving and we should ask the Holy Spirit for that same forgiving attitude ask God to reveal if there's any part of the anger you can own oh we forget about that part we solely forget about that part right there what is it in, in that anger that, that, what part of that do I own in it? I, I surely own some part in that. Or if there's any action you need to take. Number three, seek restoration and reconciliation. If you get angry with someone, the same day of the offense should be the same day of forgiveness. That ain't always the case with us because guess what? We like to hold on. We like to wait to forgive people. We like to wait 5, 10, 15, 20 years before we can forgive somebody. We got to let that thing sit in us for so long that we're so angry and bitter towards this person because they did us so wrong. Oh, they, they just did us so wrong. We don't want to have nothing to do with them. We got it. We just got we just don't want to have nothing to do with them what if God treated us that same way did not Jesus come to die for our sins for restoration and reconciliation so that we can be reconciled unto God because of our sin which separates us from God God is angry with us every day because of our sin the sins we commit, the things we do every day, we anger God. We make God angry every day. We do. But yet he is still merciful and forgiving to us. And we can't even do the same for each other. But yet we want people to forgive us. We can't even do the same. If you get angry with someone, the same day of the offense should be the same day of forgiveness. And I'm not just talking about from the mouth. From the heart. God don't say he forgives us. And still acts funny with us. And still treats us a certain way. Still side eyeing us. Still peeking around the corner at us. No God doesn't do that to us. Do not wait until tomorrow. To extend the grace you can give today. Because you're not promised tomorrow. They're not promised tomorrow. We holding on grudges. Against people. That something happens. That we can't even. Go and make it right with them. We can't even make it right now. We now we, now we even now we got to hold on to that now, because we we haven't took, taken the time and opportunity to go and make it right with them. The same day the offense should be the same day of forgiveness, but not today's society, because we like to hold on. People made us angry. They hurt us so bad. They did this. We like to hold on. Uh uh. They can't. Uh uh. You can't. No. Nah, I got. I got. I got to hold on to that. What if God treated us that same way? What if he did the same thing to us that we do to each other? The difference is God is righteous in his anger. He has every right to be angry with us. We're the one who sin against him every day. And yet he is still merciful to us. Yet he still forgives us. Yet he still wakes us up. God ain't walking around holding no grudge against us. God don't say he forgive us and then turn around and act funny towards us. He don't do that. He doesn't. He don't do that. He don't operate like that. 
Anger is inevitable, but we don't have to be afraid or ashamed of it. We can't control what happens to us, but we can control how we respond. 10% of what happens to us and 90% of how we respond. How we respond to it. So let's be people who, re who react slowly, apologize early, and forgive easily so that we can lead with love. That sounds easy, doesn't it? It really does. But that takes the power of the Holy Spirit for us to operate and live. That For that to be a lifestyle of ours. To forgive easily. Because Christ so forgives us easily. We make him angry every single day. But yet, his love, his love, he leads with his love. And if we are and if we say that we are true believers in Christ, we should lead in the same manner. We should do the same thing. We can't call ourselves believers in Christ and saying that we live according to the word and we're doing everything according to the world. The world tells us to be unforgiving. And all oh, you ain't gotta take that. You ain't gotta accept that from nobody. Oh, they did this to you. Oh, you ain't gotta you ain't gotta take that. You ain't even gotta accept that. Uh uh. Mm -mm, I wouldn't even talk to them no more. I wouldn't deal with them no more. What if God did that to you? What if he did that to you? So we don't ever think about that. What if God did that to me? What if he turned around and, and started acting funny with me? What if God just didn't forgive me at all? What if he just didn't forgive me at all? We have to live a life according to Christ. If we say that we are believers, we have to live according to that word. We have to walk in love because we understand that love covers a multitude of sins. I'm going to say that again. Love covers a multitude of sins. Confess your faults one to another. Because the word God tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. He is faithful and just to what? Forgive us and to do what? Purify us from all unrighteousness. Only God can do that. We should be, we should be faithful and just to forgive others too. Just like he's faithful and just to forgive us. We can't walk around saying the Lord's Prayer and saying to, to forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But yet we don't forgive those who trespass against us. We can't walk around like that, people. We can't we can't operate like that because that's just not the way Christ operates. And in prayer, I'm going to go ahead and pray this prayer. Father God, thank you for giving us the emotion of anger. When I feel anger coming on, give me the wisdom to pause and bring it to you. Help me be slow to speak and quick to listen. Give me self-control and help me handle my anger in a way that honors you. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a side note here. If you're experiencing deep hurt or trauma, or if you're in a situation where seeking reconciliation would be dangerous, consider seeking out a Christian counselor, a believer. Because the word of God tells us, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sin and those of the scornful. Blessed or happy is that man that does not walk in the counsel, the advice given by the ungodly. If in every situation that we need to go and seek somebody, seek somebody who's unbiased in Christ. Now, I'm going to give the reference of scriptures to that, and we're going to get out of here. Of course, we read from Ephesians 4.26 and 27 it says be angry and do not sin do not let the sun go down on your wrath i'm reading from the new king james version by the way people do not nor give place to the devil that's ephesians chapter 4 verses 26 and 27 nor give place to the devil all right matthew chapter 5 23 and 24 and the word of god reads Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar 
and there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. You see that? You see that? James chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with the meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Praise God for that. And our final reference to scriptures in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 31 and 32. Let all bitterness wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And I'm going to end with that, people. And I hope you got something out of this, people. I just pray that God will continue to work with us with the emotion of anger that we put that anger in the right direction and start doing something and let that anger lead us to love rather than bitterness. I'm your host, Deacon 170. I want to say have a, a good and blessed day in Jesus name. Amen.